Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The preliminary impression taken in alginate is usually overextended on the peripheries. So you'll need to draw a denture base outline for the final impression tray on the diagnostic cast in order to provide maximum coverage of the basal seat area. Using a pencil, draw a line one to two millimeters short of the sulcus depth that was registered in alginate. Give careful attention to the frenula in the buccal and labial areas to provide adequate relief while maintaining the required denture base outline. Because this outline is arbitrary, you will later need to try the impression tray in the patient's mouth and you'll make some adjustments of the peripheries of the tray. Because you'll be adding wax relief on the diagnostic cast, you'll draw an outline for the relief two to three millimeters short of the denture base outline. Note the relationship of these lines to the fovea palatini. For a better view, we have used a felt pen to darken the outlines. Warm one thickness of 28 gauge pink wax and adapt it over the denture base supporting area of the diagnostic cast. The model must be dry for easy adaptation. Minor wrinkles in the wax often cannot be avoided and are considered acceptable. Trim the relief wax to the outline established as the area of relief. Once the trimming is finished, prepare a mixture of auto-polymerizing acrylic resin following the manufacturer's instructions. Place the monomer in a paper cup and add the polymer. Stir the mixture to wet the powder particles and then allow it to set. While it is setting, paint the diagnostic cast with liquid foil substitute. Apply it only to the surface of the stone, not to the surface of the wax. The liquid foil substitute will enable easy separation of the impression tray from the diagnostic cast. Next, lubricate the thick side of the roller board and the roller with petroleum jelly. Also, lubricate your fingers before handling the acrylic resin. When the acrylic resin becomes doughy enough to handle, remove it from the mixing container, knead it, and place it on the thick side of the roller board. Roll it to a thickness of approximately three millimeters. Be careful not to roll it too thin. Carefully adapt the acrylic resin over the denture base outline on the diagnostic cast. Do not use too heavy finger pressure or you might create areas that are too thin, especially in the areas of the labial and buccal flanges.
using a laboratory knife or a scalpel, trim the excess acrylic resin carefully while it is still soft. After trimming, readapt the flanges to the diagnostic cast. At this point, you may set aside the maxillary tray and repeat all the procedures for the construction of the mandibular tray. Then you may resume construction of the maxillary tray while the mandibular tray is polymerizing. When the maxillary tray is completely cool and is cured sufficiently, remove the tray from the diagnostic cast and reduce any excess material or thickness with the arbor band on the dental lathe. You may use vulcanite or fissure burrs to trim and adjust the tray. Be sure to relieve the notch areas on the tray for the frenulum. You'll complete the construction of the maxillary final impression tray by placing approximately 12 holes in it using a number four straight handpiece round burr. The purpose of the holes is to relieve pressure and to avoid distortion of the tissues by allowing for expression of excess impression material when making the final impression. The borders of the tray are rounded and smooth and follow the denture base outlined on the diagnostic cast. The holes are evenly spaced over the tray, especially in the flange and palatal areas. And there are no holes directly on the residual ridge crest area. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.